Greetings, Earthlings. Today I'm back with a brand new series. Yeah, I don't have a name for this series, so if you have any ideas, let me know down below in the comments. But because it can be so difficult when you're just starting out to select the right gear to get up and recording, I wanted to start a series where I come up with a couple of different full recording setups under a specific budget to give you an idea of what you can expect in a price range and maybe give you some ideas for gear that you can get to improve your recordings. For the inaugural episode of this unnamed series, I opted to go for the modest budget of $150 for an entire recording setup. And I have to tell you, gosh darn it, that was difficult. But I did end up coming up with three different full recording setups, and I hope it gives you some ideas of what you can expect or gives you some ideas of what to pick up to get some better sounding recordings. Let's go ahead and jump to setup number one. Now we are recording with setup number one. The microphone that I opted to go with is the Behringer XM8500. This is a $23 XLR dynamic microphone. The reason I selected this microphone is simply because it's cheap and for the price, it sounds surprisingly good. It doesn't sound over boosted in the top end. It doesn't sound anemic in the low end. For $23, this thing sounds pretty dang incredible. The microphone is very basic. There are no switches, no dials, no nothing. It is bare bones. The bottom just has an XLR port and the microphone does come with a microphone clip to throw it on a microphone stand. Because this is an XLR microphone, we will need to grab an XLR cable. And in this budget range, we don't have much wiggle room. So we needed to save a bit of money. I opted to go for a single Amazon Basics 10 foot XLR to XLR cable. This comes in at around $9. Is it the most durable? No. Does it do the best at rejecting RFI and EMI? No. But for $9, it does a surprisingly good job and I used one for four years before it actually failed on me. Next, we will of course need to get a USB audio interface to connect the microphone to our computer. And for that, I opted to go for the Behringer UM2. This sets us back $48, which is a bummer because a couple of years ago, you could pick this up for $30. It has an XLR microphone and line level input. It has a quarter inch instrument input. It allows for direct zero latency monitoring as well as computer playback, has a quarter inch headphone output. On the back, you got RCA outputs to run to your speakers, which are unbalanced. You got the USB port and it does provide a full 48 volts of phantom power. If I had more of a budget, I would opt to go for something slightly higher quality, but given that we are building a full complete recording setup, we don't have enough budget to go for something slightly nicer with a better build quality. We're stuck with this, and for the price, it performs admirably. Next, we need a little bit of wind protection and plosive protection for the microphone. We unfortunately did not have enough budget to go for a proper pop filter. I selected an on-stage ball pop filter, which goes for $2.99. It doesn't do an amazing job at reducing plosives, but it does a little bit, and that will ultimately yield a better sounding recording. And it's cheap. Let's throw it in there and get a little bit better sound. We also need to pick up something to hold the microphone, and I don't like the majority of desktop stands because I think that puts the microphone a little bit too far away from your mouth, and a lot of the desktop stands that would work are out of our budget, so I opted to go for a knee wear boom arm. This clips to the side of your desk, and it is a boom arm. It gets the microphone off of the desk, gets it closer to your mouth. A few downsides to this is it does have springs on the outside, so if you bump the boom arm, you'll hear the springs jingling and jangling. But this comes in at $13.29, and for the price, it does a fine job. You can even wrap some duct tape or gaffer tape around the springs to reduce the noise that's generated by them and get a little bit better sound. Next, we will need a way to monitor our audio. And because our budget is stretched so thin, we don't have room for speakers. We don't have room for reputable studio headphones. I selected the Tascam TH02s. 
They have an all-plastic build quality. They are a mix of on-ear and over-ear headphones. They look like over-ear, but they sit very close to your ears and they feel like on-ears. The sound quality is very mid-forward and it sounds muffled and dark, but they do lay flat and these come in at $20. So although they are not the best sounding, they are not the best built, they'll do the job and it leaves us a little bit of room for some other essentials. Then because I don't remember if the headphones come with a 3.5 to 6.35 millimeter adapter, I threw one of those in the cart. This costs $5 and it converts the standard 3.5 millimeter headphone plug to quarter inch and that allows us to connect the headphones directly to our interface and monitor what we're recording through the microphone as well as hearing computer playback. And lastly, one of the most important aspects of the setup that you're getting is sound treatment. That is something that is very often overlooked and I don't have this specific solution in my studio so it's blank right here but here's a picture of that here's a picture of these moving blankets these moving blankets cost 27 dollars and 50 cents they're not going to do the best job at reducing reflections and reverb in your room but it will still improve it quite a lot and that will yield a much better sounding recording you can get by by recording in your closet which we'll discuss slightly later but this is setup number one, and the total for all of this stuff comes to $148.78. This is before tax and shipping, but you got to give me a little bit of a break <laughs> because getting all of this stuff under that budget was incredibly difficult. But there you go. That was setup number one. Let's go ahead and jump to setup number two. For setup number two, I wanted to go the USB microphone route in case you're somebody who does a lot of travel and you don't want to carry around an audio interface. The microphone that I selected is the Samson Q2U. This microphone goes for somewhere between $70 and $80. It comes with an XLR, a USB cable, a windscreen, and a desktop stand. So it comes with pretty much everything that you need. On the side of the mic, you have an on-off switch, which can function as an impromptu mute button. On the end of the microphone, you have the USB port, but you also have an XLR port, which you can run simultaneously. So you are able to record over USB and run XLR to a portable recorder and have a backup. It also has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which offers zero latency monitoring as well as computer playback. And because of all of these features, this is one of my most recommended microphones for beginning podcasters. It is so convenient. It gives you an upgrade path. And for the price, it is very hard to beat. As I alluded to earlier, I think that desktop stands are pretty useless because the microphone ends up being a little bit too far away from your mouth and a little bit too close to the desk. So when you bump it, it picks all of that up. Because of that, I threw in the Neewer Boom Arm again. This comes in at $13.29. This will just allow us to get the Q2U off of the desk and closer to our mouth to get a slightly better signal to background noise ratio. Then I know I sound like a broken record, but because our budget is stretched so thin and we still need a way to monitor our audio, I selected the Tascam TH02s. They go for 20 bucks. I've said everything that I can about these headphones. The build quality is decent. The sound quality is not very good, but it allows you to hear what you're actually recording. And lastly, we are bringing in the moving blankets again because just because it's a dynamic microphone does not mean that you will not benefit from having some sound treatment in your room. This goes for $27.50 and that will ultimately yield a much cleaner sounding recording. You will thank yourself, your audience will thank you, and that brings setup number two's total to $140.79. You still have $9.21. You can go get a bean burrito or nine of them at Taco Bell or something. That's setup number two. And now for setup number three, because I thought it would be a little bit boring just to have two dynamic microphones, I am going to go ahead and assume that you're able to record in your closet, which can function as an excellent makeshift recording booth 
It will really reduce the reflections and reverb in your recording. And also, I'm assuming that you already have a set of headphones that you like. That frees up a little bit of extra budget so we can get this microphone and get the condenser sound in this budget range. The microphone that I selected in this budget range is the Behringer C1, which is an XLR condenser microphone. This microphone is $58. I have seen it go for more. I've seen it go for less. The reason I selected this microphone is it's all we could afford in this price range. <laughs> Everything else would push us way over budget. I would like to have selected the Neat Worker B, which goes for around $90. That would be out of our budget. It would push us way over budget. So we're stuck with the Behringer C1 as our only condenser mic on the list. As I mentioned, this is an XLR microphone, so we need to throw in an XLR cable. Again, I selected the Amazon Basics 10-foot XLR cable. That costs us $9, and it does a perfectly sufficient job for the price. Then to connect this microphone to our computer, again, I selected the Behringer UM2 costs $48. It's limited in bit depth and sample rate, 16 bit up to 48 kilohertz. For most people, that's going to be more than sufficient. And for 48 bucks, as I've said before, performs pretty dang good. We do need to have some wind and plosive protection for the microphone. And for that, I selected the Pimo pop filter thing. This filter goes right onto the microphone. It puts a little bit of distance between the grill and the actual microphone. There's a tiny bit of foam on the inside to help reduce the plosives as well. And this costs $8. Not the best in terms of plosive rejection, but it does improve it quite a bit. And lastly, assuming that you are recording in your closet, chances are you won't have any surfaces to mount a desktop boom arm to. I threw an Amazon Basics tripod microphone stand in the cart as well. That costs us $23, and it'll hold the microphone. No real issues there. It does the job. And that rounds out setup number three. If my math is correct, the total comes to $146. You still got four bucks. You can get a couple of double-decker tacos, rip, whatever sad day <laughs> they're gone. <laughs> But there you go, setup number three, 146, condenser recording setup under 150 bucks. You just gotta hide in your closet and record in there. Now I want to do a few tests of these microphones. First one being a podcast test. So far, I have not had any processing on these microphones and there it is. Now I have thrown processing onto this microphone and here is how it sounds. A little bit of compression, a little bit of EQ, and here on this screen is what I did to it. Here's how the XM8500 would sound in a podcasting situation. Now I am on setup number two. This is the Q2U, and I am talking. I am talking without any processing, and I snapped. Now the processing is on. A little bit of EQ, a little bit of compression. Here is a screenshot of what kind of processing I am actually doing. Listen to it. This is what it would sound like in a podcasting situation if you used the exact same processing with my exact same voice in the exact same room as me. And now I am speaking into setup number three, the Behringer C1 through the UM2. There is no processing right now, and there we go. Now I have processing turned on, compression, EQ. Look on the screen right now. This is the actual processing that I did. This will give you an idea of how it would perform in a podcasting situation.
legs all day I build up quite an appetite I don't know what to say Except I think the mics are tight I don't know how to end this stupid song I don't know how, so I will just end it. That is how you do it. End it when it needs to end. It needed to end, and it will end now. There you go. Music test for you guys on all the different microphones. <laughs> and there you go. Those were my three setups that I came up with under the $150 budget. Let me know in the comments down below which of the setups you like the best. The XM8500, the Q2U, or the Behringer C1. Also, I know some people were inevitably screaming in the comments, Oh my god, why didn't he pick this? Why didn't he pick this microphone and this interface with Dr. Bajor? Ah! Let me know how I screwed it up. <laughs> Let me know down below how I screwed that up. Also, because I haven't asked you to write enough in the comments down below, let me know what you thought of this series, and also let me know if you want to see more of them and what budget I should shoot for next. Do you think I should go to 300 200 $25? Let me know. Let me know what budget you think I should shoot for in the next iteration of this series. But with that being said, if you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you thought this video stunk more than me after being locked up in quarantine for six months and not showering enough, go, <laughs> go ahead and give me a thumbs down. Want more videos? Logo down beneath me. Click that. Subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell icon. Want to hang out in the Discord server? We talk about microphones and audio gear all day. Podcastage.com slash Discord. And if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing folks and people over here, you can do so by clicking that join button and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me continue to bring you these videos. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you later. Bye.